A population of five million, more than seven ethnic groups, common borders with Sudan, Chad, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Cameroon, and Congo, and the capital Bangui, where most of the country's health facilities are concentrated. That's a snapshot of the Central African Republic. Little is heard about this country, which has been off the radar screen of the international community for years. Yet it has recently gone through a turbulent period. After 10 years of political and military instability, the country is returning to peace. Despite the recent peace accords, there are still open conflicts between the CPJP and UFDR, two groups that are still active in the east, fighting for control of the diamond-bearing areas. Beyond the capital, there's little or no access to health care. The few facilities scattered across the country often lack drugs and qualified medical staff. The health ministry's budget is practically non-existent and international organizations are reluctant to get involved. What we see is that the, the weakness of the Ministry of Health makes it very difficult to launch development activities that can be sustainable. And what we see amongst the major donors is this fundamental concern about investing development money today because they don't feel that it can be managed and, um, and well utilized in the country. A weak government with no money and a hundred doctors for the whole country. The Médecins Sans Frontières teams in the field report an alarming health situation and mortality rates comparable to the most widely mediatized emergencies. But the situation in the Central African Republic is not the result of an acute or one-off disaster. This is a chronic crisis, without any major event. The health problems common to many African countries take on catastrophic proportions here, including the HIV and tuberculosis epidemics, malaria, respiratory infections, diarrhea and malnutrition. For HIV, TB and malaria, we have enormous problems mobilizing support, plus national programs that move at a snail's pace and which have a completely uncertain future. Médecins Sans Frontières has been working in the country for six years and employs 1,400 people to provide primary and secondary health care. Today, when we look at the overview of MSF's activities, our budget is about three quarters the size of the budget of the Ministry of Health. And when you look at the work that's being done outside of Bangui, we provide probably 50% um, of the healthcare access outside of the capital. Uh, we have nine hospitals in the country. We have really a significant amount of the primary and secondary healthcare capacity outside of Bangui is, is run by MSF. MSF has teams working in two cities in the west of the country, in Paua and Kano. In Paua, in addition to working in the general hospital, they supervise seven health centers. MSF has set up a referral system using motorcycles to take patients from these centers to the hospital. For the motorcycle referrals, in general they refer really complicated cases requiring hospital admission extremely urgent cases such as snake bites, difficult or potentially complicated deliveries, and serious malaria cases, anemic or neurological forms that absolutely cannot be treated in a health center. The hospital in power has 155 beds. It has surgery, pediatrics and maternity wards, and treats malnutrition, HIV AIDS and tuberculosis too. Now, when I walk in the city or along the roads, I meet patients that I'm treating at the hospital. Not only HIV patients, but patients we've treated in the other wards too. So we can really see that MSF has a good reason to be working in Paua. Children are the first to suffer from the country's health crisis. For those who live too far from a health facility, the slightest diarrhea or respiratory infection can lead to death. This situation only gets worse during the malaria season. Well, in our pediatric ward in Pawa, we see um, in the summer months when we have the peak season for malaria, the number of patients in our wards doubles and sometimes triples. And those patients that are arriving are often coming with severe malaria and complications. 
The mortality rates are relatively in control in our facilities, but for me the thing I worry the most about is the children that have no access to treatment. And since we know today that only a small percentage of the overall population has access to health care in the Central African Republic, uh, we know that mortality rates are, are very high. Mortality rates that an epidemiological study has just confirmed. On the request of the team in Kano, Epicentre conducted two retrospective mortality studies in the region in May and July 2011. The study involved visiting households in Karno sub-district, then asking the head of household about the household composition. We then asked about the number of people who had died since the 1st of January 2011, how many people had died in the household. During the second survey in July, we added questions about causes of death, so we asked about the major symptoms, the symptoms they presented before they died. MSF was expecting the study to confirm high mortality rates, but it wasn't expecting quite these results. So we estimated the crude mortality rate of about 3.7 per 10,000 per day since January 2011, and the mortality rates for children under the age of 5 of 7 per 10,000 per day. These figures are three times higher than the emergency threshold. That figure corresponds, on average, to the death of 35 children per day in the city of Carno since the 1st of January 2011. The three main causes of mortality were diarrhea, acute respiratory infections and malaria. The fact that we found rather common causes of mortality shows that the deaths are essentially avoidable and that there's basically a problem of access to primary health care both in rural areas and the city of Carno. Since 2010, MSF has been treating HIV and tuberculosis patients in Carno. The study's results showed that MSF had to expand its activities. MSF is reorienting its activities in Carno to um, dramatically increase its, the access to primary and secondary health care. So primary health care is, is really uh, literally having small clinics out in the villages that allow uh, women to bring their children into the clinic to, to get the very most basic care. And after that, we ensure a system of referral so people can get from these remote clinics to the central hospital. In addition, in the hospital in Carno, we're opening the pediatric ward to provide hospitalization care for children free of charge. This year, MSF is also going to conduct measles and pneumococcal vaccination campaigns in Carno and Power. These essential vaccines should have an impact on the mortality rate. This is just one of the ways in which MSF intends to respond to this silent and neglected crisis.